on this episode, we summarize our editor project. This has been a bit rough. This has been a bit rough, I admit. We achieve full shenanigans. I love the shenanigans happening here. Woohoo! Just in time for our studio to collapse. Don't worry, it's fine. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDesk Academy and this is the advanced ROM tutorial and this should be, hopefully, fingers crossed, the final episode where we're gonna dig into the preliminary final episode where we're gonna dig into our sprite editor. Loads sprite did. Sprite did. <laughs> okay, so we have like this editor here now and it's all of, uh, nice and peachy. It kind of works, but there's some still some little details that I don't like about this and I want to fix them. Uh, uh, and yeah, I have a whole list here. One immediate problem that I want to address is this bug. Mm, what happened there? Uh, the problem is, I, I'm assuming, the problem is that we are scrolling and we're not resetting the scroll when we're switching from one mode to another. Um, so I want to address that immediately. Uh, I'm going to go with an update function and uh, I want to, when we are here, when we are uh, switching to the edit mode, I want scroll Y to be zero and scroll X to be also zero. I want to just reset those two things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna just like, just for robustness sake, I'm just gonna also reset it when we switch back from that mode. Uh, so here in the update edit function, when we're switching to the list, back to the list view, I want to also reset the sprite, uh, the scroll X and scroll Y. So now when we scroll down here and we wanna create a new thing, then it actually, it actually, the, the menu doesn't scroll away. And then if we return, yeah, you, the, you know, there's some scrolling happening automatically because you know we are um, the scrolling has to catch up with the position of the cursor, but it's fine, it's okay. Okay, so this is done. All right, next up, I want to add some broad robustness. And there's a simple bug that we can, I'm gonna save before we do that. There's a simple bug that we can create here. For example, when we set this thing to one, we're running out of memory. And the reason why we're running out of memory is because we caused an infinite loop. So we're using this next function uh, to sprite chain to draw multiple sprites at the same time. And each sprite knows which sprite is to be drawn next. But if you close the circle there, and if the sprites just keep looping in, in the circle, then eventually you will run out of memory because it just like draws a whole bunch of sprites at the same time and it just never ends and it's, it's horrible. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to fix this. Um, let, me, let, me, let me check this. So here's the draw function, right? Here's the, uh, no, it's actually in tools. Here, here's my SPR, right? And uh, here's where we're drawing the my SPR, but maybe, now I'm, I'm a bit worried about rewriting the my SPR because we might change the my SPR later on. We might want to add additional functionality. And when we do, I want to just be able to drop in, in my, my SPR, <laughs> just drop it in here. So maybe we need to do a wrapper for that. Let's do a wrapper. Um, validate my SPR. Or, or, or let's call it uh, wrap. Let's call it wrap my SPR, right? And for now, uh, we're just gonna call my SPR with all those values, uh, but um, S I S X S Y, like this, um, right? Um, and then every time we're drawing stuff to the screen, for example, here my SPR, we're gonna use wrap my SPR. Um, so here we're gonna do this when we're doing it edit mode. Um, where are we doing this here? Where <laughs> How did we do this? Oh, we actually never drawing this in this mode. Okay, that's good. Yeah, sure. Let's get this bad boy out and let's put it back in. For some reason, we never drawing it in this mode, weird. Um, so yeah, um, if cells per, um, if, what, what happens if we run this? Nothing happens because cells per is never there. Okay, so we're gonna do something like, um, we're gonna get the menu. Oh. Don't worry, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna go uh, wrap my s wrap my spr menu dot cur um, cmd y. No, not menu. My menu. If my menu. 
So we're gonna grab the menu item we currently selected and we're gonna get the CMDIY from that menu. Let's try that. Yeah, okay, so now we can, I wonder why I, I must have deleted it in the, in the rewrites, right? So now we can edit in there and, and, and go up, Ooh. and we can go out again. Okay, good. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, this is this is this is correct. This is why we're doing this. This is this is absolutely correct. And so, yeah, because now when we select the the lowest um, the lowest entry, that is the plus button to the, the to add a new sprite, right? But if we select that, it doesn't have I think a, a, a CMDY, and so then it won't actually know which number to draw in. So here, let me start. Let me start. Um, in the tools function here. Let me start checking for potential errors, right? So let's go something like if si equals nil. That's a good first check then. Uh, and then we're gonna return. If uh, my spr si, if that is nil, then return. Uh, and and otherwise we're gonna draw it. So this should should see now we can select this and it will won't actually draw anything, right? This is good. We might want to maybe draw like a, a meaningful message there. That might be a good idea. So something like um, BG print. And let's let's put it to nil. Let's draw in like a nice little red nil in the center. So SX. S Y and red. See, there's there's our nil. Uh, we might want to have, we, we're gonna make it really nice. One, uh, let's go minus uh, one, two, three, four, five, five times four, five times two. Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I just, I, I have to, I have to do this, these things. Okay, so um, maybe, maybe, maybe red is not quite good. Let, let's put. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I get caught in the details. I'm, I'm a, The aesthetics are, are important to me. Maybe, maybe this. Yeah, this, this looks way less. Dramatic. It was a bit too, the red one was a bit dramatic. Uh, and then if um, the entry is nil, then we're gonna go. Uh, we cannot ch actually check this. Um, um, in this way, in this case, if if the so if this is nil, um, if the si was nil, then I just want to print a nil. But if actually I printed something, like if I picked a number and that number is just like bogus, then I actually want to see the number to, to be able to debug this stuff. Um, so I just like, I want to maybe print the si here so I can see what's happening. Again, no way for us to actually test this any, any way. Okay, um, okay, so these are the two cases um, uh, uh, covered where we want to make sure that um, we're not drawing something that is nil and that we're not drawing something that's outside of the data that we have. Um, now I want to actually address the wraparound thing. And let's, let's do like an obvious thing, I'm gonna go like if, uh, let's go lo local ms equals my sprsi, we're gonna do this. And we're gonna check if there is even a next value. If there is no next value, then it doesn't matter. But if there is a next value, then that we have to actually address this. So if ms uh, dot, uh, no, ms uh, eight. If there is an ms eight, then. Check for loops. Um, and we're gonna go if ms, well, hmm. It's, it's a bit difficult how to do this now because we did this recursively and that's really nice and, and, and cool, um, but it's kind of 
tough to do this. Something we could do is also do it recursively. Um, so we want to maybe do like a cutoff at some point, right? Because there's an obvious, there's an obvious solution here. We're going to go if MS8 equals um, SI. So if the thing references itself, then uh, we're going to do BG print. loop right something like this uh, so this will this absolutely make sure that like if we do a self-referential thing we're just gonna loop through and then uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna draw it right so here we're gonna set it next to one and now we have a loop that's good by the way, why did I have to delete the nil? I thought we fixed that. Okay, something that we have to add to the list. All right, so now this is robust. Now this, this won't, uh, we have to actually set it to something else and that will fix the problem. Okay, that's good. Uh, but now we might want to actually go the extra mile and make sure that um, you don't have, because we might point to a different um, sprite and that sprite might point us back so there might be the loop might be wider than just like immediately pointing to itself so we might want to check for that as well so we're gonna do like an else here and we're gonna do it recursively as well so we're gonna go check loop and then we're gonna also add a depth a maximum depth um, for now we're gonna set the maximum depth to 10 and in this case we're also going to print um, the loop mess error message okay so now we need to uh, do this check loop thing um, function check loop ms uh, 10 right um, Right, and oh no, no, not 10, um, depth. Uh, so we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna go depth minus equal one. And if depth, um, if, that's, if that's smaller equals zero, then return. Um, that's, that makes sure that we're gonna like we're not our check function doesn't get caught up in the loop itself, right? So we're gonna return. Um, so if we reach a depth, we're gonna return true. That means that um, the loop is actually a loop. Like we we run this function a bunch of times. We draw a sprite. We draw the next sprite. We draw the next sprite. We draw the next sprite. And when we reach that depth that we set up, like the maximum depth, that means that we are maybe caught up in the loop. And then we're gonna just return true uh, as as the result. And otherwise, we're gonna actually um, see if there is if we maybe reach the end of the loop. So we're gonna go like um, yeah, we're gonna go if ms eight, then else end. So if there is no entry in, there is no next sprite to draw. We're just gonna return false. There is no loop. We've, we've found the end of the loop. We're returning false and everything is peachy. If, uh, if there is an entry, we're gonna run the check loop function itself. This is now the recursive part. Then this is now where the function check loop calls itself, but it calls itself on the next entry. My SPR. Like this, right? So we're checking the next one like this. Also, it might be worthwhile doing a check if we're going to do a check uh, if ms equals nil, then return true as well. Like there is also some kind of bug with a with a loop. All right, so let's let's. <laughs> It's a bit of a crazy function. Let's just see if this works. Maybe there's some, some bug here. So far it looks good. If I set 
the next to one, obviously it will return a loop. Um, if I set it to two, that works. But if then in two, I set it set the two to one, now we caught in loop because two is referencing one and one referencing two, and now we are referencing each other. I could set reference three, and three will loop back to one. And again, then that's create a loop. So this just adds a bit of a robustness. Recursive stuff is a little bit mind melty. And technically, you know, technically you don't need this stuff. You don't need the check loop function here at all. It's just a little robustness that I added here. Uh, I think this, just making sure that the sprites cannot reference themselves, that actually covers like 95% of all problems. Okay, so this should finish our robustness stuff. Now I want to add a new capability, or actually why we're here, I want to maybe address a slight problem that we have right now. So um, let's say I have this here, I set the next to two. So now we're drawing two sprites on top of each other, but now we have a gap in our, in our array, you see? Because we have like the, this entry, entry number seven, is still set to nil, and entry number eight is still is set to two now. So this causes a problem now because we have like a gap in an array and we know that our export function doesn't deal well with gaps in the arrays. So in this kind of case, we want to fill in the fx. We want to make the fx actually zero. Oops, not nine, zero. So, um, so we don't get any, into any troubles. So I want to add this kind of robustness to it as well. Uh, let me see. So this is going to be here and enter, enter edit, enter edit, right? Uh, we're going to do something like if um, cur x, this will only really apply to an entry number eight. So if cur x equals eight, then, so if this is, if this is eight, if type val is not equals nil, and, oh wait, not corrects. We need to, um, if this, um, so if we're editing the, the entry at number eight, and if the thing that we're trying to get in is not nil, um, then we're gonna check if data cmdy seven. So we're gonna go if, data cmdy7 equals nil, then, and in this case, we're gonna set it to uh, zero. Just making sure that we're closing in those gaps, right? Let's see, let's see how this works. All right, so first we're setting this to two, and now it automatically set um, fx to zero. So that's what we wanted. Now, another thing I wanted to do is like if I want to be able to, to actually set something to nil and it's not not allowing us to do this. Also, by the way, why did I, why is this like this? That's not supposed to be like this. We sp deliberately made it so it's not like this. Okay, so first of all, let me fix it in the nil stuff. I thought this was, this, this solved this problem. I'm, I'm really, really confused. Does that work? Oh, maybe the two string function actually produces nil. That would be fun. Oh, it actually does. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Okay, so either s equals nil or s equals nil. I I didn't know that that the two string data. If you run nil on a two string data, it actually produces this string nil. <laughs> okay, whatever. Good. The next thing I want to do is, uh, especially for the last two entries for uh, six and seven, if I type in nothing, I want like I want nothing, right? I I don't want just zero. I just want to have nothing in here. Uh, in this case, I want actually to uh, it to be reset to to nil, so I can actually um, delete the sixth and seventh entry if I want. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go if um, my menu cmd x equals eight. We're actually already checking this, so we're gonna go else. Uh, and if it's if it's nil, if we're we're trying to get nil into the eighth entry, uh, we're gonna go. You know what? We're not going to do anything here. We're going to do it down there. We are actually trying to put in something that's nil. Then we're going to check if the thing that we're editing is the last entry. If it's the last entry, we're going to do something. Um, 
So if my menu CMD X, if that is equals to data CMD Y with number of entries in our thing. So if we are trying to currently edit the last entry in our in our data line, then else del i I'm going to delete this index. And we could set it to nil, but I, there's sometimes some weird behavior with that. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't like that behavior sometimes. Sometimes you set something, an entry to nil, but it's still kind of there, but it's just nil. It's weird. Um, so I just want to just delete that entry like this. Uh, but I want to make it so that it's only greater equals seven. So only for the seventh and eighth entry. Okay, all right, so if we're trying to edit entry number seven or eight, so or if, if CMDX is seven greater or equal seven, and the entry we're currently editing is the last entry in our data, then we're deleting that entry. Otherwise, we're setting to zero. Um, well, what about this? Let's, we have to do it twice now, right? Uh, let's do it like this. Okay, so we're gonna set it to zero. And then we're gonna do an else. Because we don't want to just edit it as well at, at the same time. Something like this, yeah, 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 this is good, this is good. Maybe it is a bit com too complicated. I think we could have set it earlier and then deleted it afterwards. I think that might be, might be actually a good idea. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. It's fine, it's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, let's try that. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna set it to two. Let's create a loop. Oh yeah, because we're editing uh, spread number two. Okay, so now I'm gonna delete it. Now it was set to nil. Now if I delete this, it will also be set to nil. That's what we wanted. Ta-da! And if we set this to, to zero, it's zero, not nil now, right? I love the shenanigans happening here. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, this has been a bit rough. This has been a bit rough, I admit. This is the, the kind of like little nitty gritty behavior that I want to happen automatically. So I don't mess up my, accidentally mess up my, my code because I don't want to be messing up the, uh, all the data in my uh, huge sprite array. Okay, there's just one more thing to do and that is gonna be deleting sprites. Um, so I, I was thinking about how to do this. I think the easiest way of doing this is gonna be um, just put in button to delete a sprite. Um, so just like in I, or not IO, I always want to say IO. It's here, here when we're doing this stuff. I, I just wanna add a menu item on, on, the, on the very end. Yeah, I wanna add it at the very end. And that's gonna be delete. like this, uh, with, I don't care. Um, CMD is gonna be del spur. X is gonna be two. Y is gonna be, I'm gonna copy this stuff over, um, multiplied by eight, because this is gonna be the eighth entry. No, 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 no. Uh, instead of eight, we're gonna have nine, I think. Uh, and yeah, and that's gonna be it. So let's try that. There's delete. Um, I want to have it uh, a little bit offset. Yeah, so it's like a, its own menu item. Um, now I cannot select this, so we're gonna go in an update function and we're gonna fix that problem. So if cur uh, this is here, right? Um, so else if cur y is smaller than equals eight. Nine else. Actually, else if cur y 
equals nine, then uh, it's one, but then also it's two again, something like this. So if you're selected, the ninth entry is gonna be default back to one, but otherwise it will default to two. Let's try that. Oh, didn't work. Wait, wait, am I, am I going crazy? Did I break something accidentally? Am I, am I taking crazy pills? No, I, what did I do? Okay, but, uh, okay. so on the 10th entry, on the 10th entry, we wanna go back to, okay, this is good. See, now we can, we can just easily delete the sprite. So now we want to just trigger the delete. Where do, are we triggering the delete? Uh, we're gonna go here where we're pressing the buttons. Um, usually we're adding the, the value, but um, if it's delete, else if, uh, if it, if del SPR, then. Now this is a bit of a tricky thing because this might cause huge upheaval, but we have to do it, right? Um, so, First of all, it's gonna be kind of like returning to the main menu. So I wanna kind of like keep this in around here. Oops, uh, indentation, fixing indentation. Because we kind of, oh man, what, what? Ah! <laughs> indentation, come on. Okay, N now it worked. Okay, so this kind of old code to just return to the main menu. Um, but now comes the actual delete part. We're gonna go del i data um, cell spur. That is it, that's, that's just gonna be it. Now the problem is like cell spur is then no longer selected, so it's gonna be a bit weird. Um, we can go cell spur minus equal one if cell spur uh, equals zero, then cell, cell spur, spur equals one. Um, okay, let's try that. So let us, let's create a new sprite and delete it immediately. So we're gonna go here. So now we create a new sprite. We're gonna go in here, delete. And yeah, now we deleted it as well. Let's delete sprite number 25 and see what's happening. So this one is the last one and this one is the previous one. Let's just delete maybe one. Let's just delete this bullet. I don't like this bullet. I hate this bullet. I'm gonna delete this bullet. Um, let's delete this. And now we don't longer have this bullet anymore. This totally worked. Now, actually I wanted to add one more feature, but this episode was way longer than expected. So I decided to maybe put this off to the doggy zone. Let's move on to the doggy zone. Right, so there's one thing about this editor that I, I don't quite like. Now it's completely usable. We're gonna see, we're gonna keep using this. We're gonna see if there's any problems that come up and we're gonna fix them maybe in a future episode. But there's one thing that I never liked about this specific version of the editor. And in order to explain, I'm gonna show you the editor that I initially created as is way overblown, has way too many features. All right, so this is my own original editor. It has mouse controls. Yes, it has mouse controls, but it also has something funky. Look at how um, the different sprites that I have, they are actually named. They have names, right? That's weird. And you can even, there's like a little side menu that it, that can pop up and I can do all sorts of funky stuff here. Like I can insert a, a sprite in there. I can swap two sprites. I can copy a sprite, like duplicate a sprite. I can, like there's, there's weird additional features I, I added that are kind of fun and, and good. But I can, as you can see, I can also name things. So I can change the name of a sprite. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh God, everything is, uh, is the wrong way around. Okay, so I can change this hello world, right? I can change the name of the sprite. Um, this is what we call metadata. This is not, this, the names of the sprite are not saved in the same myshmup.txt file that is then imported into our main program. We actually are saving into two files. One file is the actual raw data of the sprites, but there's a second file that manages, you know, these things, the descriptions of the sprites, the notes that I made about the sprites to just give me, the, the guy working with the sprites, to give me an idea what the sprites are. I don't need those names in the game, 
but I might need them when I'm editing the sprites. So this is kind of like a nice little quality of life feature that I added to my uh, initial sprite editor. I don't know if I need this. I wanted to maybe add this in our sprite at some point, but you know what? I'm gonna leave this to the doggy zone. So your goal for the doggy zone is gonna be like to add more spice to the sprite editor. You can add metadata like here where you can describe the sprites and save that into a special separate file. You can add those functions that I've shown you here where you can maybe duplicate sprites, uh, change the positioning of the sprites. Um, you can swap two sprites with each other and so forth. And I even added functionality where it's like, this is like really funky where you can, like you don't have to edit numbers, but you can actually, you know, see the sprite sheet and actually click on where you want the sprite to be. So you can just pick the sprite from the sprite sheet and so forth. You can do a lot in this editor, in this version of my editor. For example, here when we do the offset, I can actually use the cursor keys to set the offset. I don't have to type in anything. So yeah, these are just like some ideas on how you can, you know, improve your editor. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say that I'm gonna make um, this version of the editor, this uh, weird prototype version of the editor, I'm gonna make this available to all of the Donut Plus uh, coffee supporter this month. Uh, you can actually, I'm gonna make it so that you can use it for this project if you want to. I'm gonna make a small introduction of how to use it and so forth. Uh, fair warning, uh, this is a bit of a spaghetti code. But yeah, it might be fun to try it out. And your task for the doggy zone now is to go wild and, and you know create your own sprite editor to be exactly the way you want it to be. And if you're finished, I want to see your results. I want to see the editor that you ended up with. For now, for this tutorial, I'm gonna actually keep using the sprite dit editor that I created here. Um, I think this is some bare bones functionality. We're gonna see if this works well and if there's any uh, additions that we want to add. And if I see something really cool that you guys came up with, we're gonna try adding it later on. Anyway, let's move on to the end of the episode where I see a big thank you and huge shout outs to all the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com. Thank you for making this show possible. Uh, if you want to support the show as well, the address is coffee.com slash lazy devs. Another thing I wanted to do uh, at the end here is I wanted to uh, show off some work that I've seen somebody post in uh, in the Discord. This one is, was posted by Scientist WD. Uh, these are like experiments they did with weapons and this is just incredible stuff. So for example, look at this. This is kind of like this kind of like wild, crazy spread fire that's like not like a bit chaotic, a little bit randomized. And I love, really love like the gigantic fireball that comes out here using the, the blobs that we have here. So incredible, incredible effects. I love this one, which is like the beam that we already talked about. I like this as well. Um, perfectly honest, I, I think the, there's a bit of a wiggly, wiggliness happening with the bean. I think it's more fun if the bean is like really straight, although this works as well, I have to say. Um, but the thing that I really impressed me here are the stars. Do you see the little stars that are happening here, the star particles? That is hot. That is hot stuff. Uh, and then we have like these beautiful bombs. You're again making use of those star particles. They are incredible. Like the smart bomb happening here. That's just so, you know, so arcadey and, and beautiful. I love this. And now for something completely, you know, crazy, we have like these little bugs that, you know, stay there and then launch later and then green explosions, like, wow. I was really impressed by this collection of, of different gifts. I, it really feels like Scientist WD had a lot of fun experimenting with different weapon systems. And there's a lot of things that that caught my eye that I'm, I'm gonna put into my pocket for later. Well done, Scientist WD, I'm impressed. Yes, 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 so this was the great editor arc um, I'm pretty sure we're going to return to editors later. We're going to create more editors, obviously, but we might actually want to uh, tweak this editor that we have in the future. For now, we're going to return back to our game and do some optimization, bug fixing, and also we need to do some planning. Where are we even going? We're going to find out on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.